Disclaimer, if you are in my family, I highly recommend to skip this video. There might be information in here that would be very sad. I leave it up to you to continue watching or not, but if you are a member of my family, I do recommend to probably skip this video. Hey everyone, Britta Albert here. If this is your first time here, I'm a spiritual transformational life coach. And it's my goal for this channel to help you overcome the obstacles that are standing in the way of you living your best and most authentic life. If you watched my last video, I shared how I was struggling with self-care and what was actually really blocking my self-care. And that was ultimately feelings of worthlessness. I highly recommend checking out that video if you haven't seen it already, but it's not necessary to understand this video. In that video, I alluded to what can happen sometimes when we experience a revelation of something that has been buried within us that we struggle with. Now, part of the reason that I was frustrated in that video is because when I realized that I am a people pleaser and I ultimately wanted to be wanted and needed emotionally from work, from my kids, from my husband, from friends, and what it was doing to me and, and what I would be like without that, part of my frustration is because I felt like I've healed this before. Now again, referencing my last video, I kind of broke down how to process through that and how there's multiple steps when you are clearing trauma now, what I did not share in my last video is what I have cleared before and what it was like when I received a revelation of what I struggled with and I didn't know what to do with that information when it came. So part of my, my frustration when I had that revelation that I was wanting to be wanted and needed is again, in that particular situation of my last video, I was wanting to be wanted and needed emotionally. I have in the past struggled with wanting to be wanted and needed sexually. When I was a teenager, I had a boyfriend who was a little bit older than me. And when he turned 18, he was able to rent a hotel room. It was him and his best friend and his best friend's girlfriend, who I was also friends with, and the four of us, we went and stayed in this hotel. And of course, we lied to our parents and told that we were staying at other kids' houses and stuff. And so I already, I'm, I was not ever a kid to really break the rules. So I was really, really nervous to even be there. I didn't enjoy any of it. I didn't enjoy... They had alcohol, I was freaking out, thinking like, the front clerk was like gonna find out who we were and call our parents, I don't know. I was so paranoid that we were gonna get caught that there was no enjoyment in the situation for me at all. And my boyfriend at the time, he was not pressuring me at all. Like this was for his birthday, he just wanted to have some fun. And his best friend took me aside and told me that my boyfriend had spent a lot of money on the hotel and that I better put out. I had not had sex at the time and I, I really didn't know what to do. I, I wanted to leave, but at the same time, somebody spent money. I just felt this obligation and expectation that I didn't agree to, but I, I felt like he spent his money that he worked for. He had a job and I knew his family didn't have a whole lot of money. So, you know, for him to spend that kind of money to rent a hotel room for the night, I, I believed his friend that, that the money was more valuable than me. So it didn't go obviously like any kind of fairy tale. I had to initially stop him because I was too scared. But it was over and and that was that. And I didn't know how I felt about myself anymore. 
And through the rest of the relationship, I just kind of let it go. And through the rest of adulthood, I just kind of let it go. And it was about 10 years later. So I was probably about 26 years old. I was driving in my car, just driving home from work, completely by myself, not thinking about this at all. And all of a sudden it was like, I got sucker punched. I can picture exactly where I was, what road I was on, the instant that it came into my mind. And when people say, when they have near death experiences and they say that they saw their life flash before their eyes, that's very much what I can equate this to. In the matter of less than a millisecond, it wasn't even a full breath. It wasn't even the full blink of an eye. It was so fast. I had all this like download of information just pop into my mind. All of a sudden I saw myself I was 16 years old. I was in the hotel. His friend was taking me aside and telling me what was expected of me and the emotions that I had and, and all of this and this and this and this and this happened after that because of this and this happened after that because of this and so on and so forth. And I realized I was also shown the hotel because I know the hotel is still there. And now that I'm an adult, I understand what things cost. This hotel is nice enough. But this hotel is like a hundred dollars a night, okay? And back then, 10 years ago, it probably was about $90 a night. So I realized in that moment, in that less than a breath, that sucker punch to my heart, to my chest, I received this download of information. And with that information, I received the understanding that my value that the value of my virginity was less than a hundred dollars. And I had been living that since then. I had been believing, not really understanding the dollar amount value, but I had been living that I was worth that much essentially for the last 10 years. And it's not to say that I have been promiscuous and it's not to say that I've had many lovers or anything like that. I had just been living and believing in myself that I was of that value. But that was the first time that I really saw and realized <laughs> the dollar amount associated with the value that I had for myself. And I was able to clearly see the connections of the choices that I've made or the way that I've felt about myself throughout the years since then. And so when I had my frustration in the last video that I posted about the feeling of wanting to be needed and wanted, when I was a teenager into my early 20s, again, I didn't go out and seek it out. I, I've not had and I'm not judging people who have had many lovers. I had other things that held me back of self-consciousness and things like that. But, but it's kind of like the culture of social media. The more likes you have, the more you feel loved or the more you feel seen or the more you feel valued. It wasn't that I actually had sex with a lot of people, but it was like the more people that wanted to have sex with me, then the more valuable I was. So it wasn't about having relationships. It wasn't about having sex. It wasn't about being in other people's bed or them being in mine. And those things actually in reality rarely happened, but I wanted to be wanted, if that makes any sense. So the things that I did, the, the barriers that I did not put up when I should have, the way I let men speak to me when I should not have, the way I allowed men to manipulate me to say, for example, um, there's somebody who works next door to where I work. We're not friends. I don't know him outside of work. We're not family. And he would always, he makes me very uncomfortable. He makes other women very uncomfortable. And he would always say, well, where's my hug today? And it was like this, this guilt trip feeling of obligation. I owe him nothing. 
I know that now. But back then, I would have hugged him out of obligation because I felt like my value was less. And I wanted, I, I welcomed those creeps, essentially, into my, not my life, but, but my, my surroundings. And when I realized that, when that revelation hit me, it literally knocked the wind out of me. I was driving home from work. Bam, hit me out of nowhere. I had a death grip on the steering wheel. I literally went, <gasps> and I just lost it. I had to pull over. I was crying and crying and crying and crying so hard. My soul felt like it was pouring out of my physical body. That was the hardest thing of all of the revelations that I have experienced. That's the one that sticks out the most to me because it was the most painful realization that when there was a dollar amount to my value and I realized that I had valued myself and sold myself essentially for less than a hundred dollars for that part of me and what that meant that was so difficult and I was upset. I was angry. I literally started yelling at God. Why did he show that to me? Because what was I supposed to do with that information? How was I even supposed to heal it? I couldn't change it. What did that mean? And that one took years. That one took years. And I have a wonderful friend named Pilar who recently sent me an email and she was explaining that when you have trauma caused from people, it takes other people to heal it. And I didn't know that then. That was like seven years ago. And she's absolutely right because looking back now, why did it take years? Because that was, that was right, right about the time, right? Maybe a little bit before when I met Stan, my husband, but there was so much going on with that. You know, we were coworkers and we didn't even like each other at first. He says he liked me, but whatever. We had a, I didn't like him. We had a um, competition. We were competitive when we worked together. And, and it took several years to open up and allow him into my life. But it took my husband and it took his love to help me heal from that and to build up my value that not associated with my body, not associated with sex and how, and, and I don't want to misinterpret this experience. It's not that my value comes from my husband. It's that he has helped me heal and I have learned my value from myself. So in the last video I posted when I expressed my frustration where I felt like I'd healed this before, I want you to understand that I did. I really truly did. I no longer need or want to feel needed or wanted sexually from other people. So my frustration was when I realized that I still wanted to feel needed and wanted emotionally and the power I was giving that in my life and how it was stopping me from having self-care. And essentially it was still tied to these beliefs of worthlessness. So that's where that frustration came from. So I don't, I don't want anyone to think that number one, I haven't healed the sexual trauma part of it. And number two, that just because that's healed, it doesn't mean it won't come up later when I'm ready to heal another part of it. And also, I don't want anybody to have the misunderstanding that I just switched my value from one thing to another, which I did, but I didn't know that I did. I did it the emotional way. But I don't want you to feel like that it's okay to have somebody else give you that validation. 
I hope this is making sense. My validation and my value does not come from my husband. He helped me heal. I have my validation and value sexually within myself. And now I'm in the process of healing and having my own validation and value emotionally. Please in the comments, let me know if that makes sense. <laughs> I'm hoping that I'm explaining this correctly. So if you have or are healing sexual trauma, like I've said so many times when it comes to healing trauma, be patient with yourself. These things, they take root and these roots break off into many different areas. And once you realize something, like when I received that, and I still can't even tell you what triggered it. I, I have no idea. It literally came out of nowhere and sucker punched me and hit me in the chest. And it took years to process through that one. Be patient with yourself because the mere fact that you're acknowledging that it's there and you're realizing that it's there is the first step to healing it. You're not capable of healing it if you don't know that it's there. And like I said in my last video, the deeper you go, the easier it actually is. The worst part is acknowledging that it's there because that's the big scary part. Every time that I go back and I revisit or that something's brought to my attention regarding these scenarios in my life or things that I'm healing from, it gets easier and there's less resistance because the deeper they are, the smaller the bit. It's like shrapnel in your body or in your soul. The more you get to those itty bitty parts of shrapnel, you realize just how subtle they are, how you miss them the first time or why. And be gracious with yourself and understand that this is part of the process as well. So thank you guys again for being so awesome, being here, watching this video. I love all of your comments. They're so uplifting and they really help us build this community. Thank you for sharing the videos and really reaching out to people who you know that these videos can help them as well. And same for this video. If there's anybody that you know who has struggled with sexual trauma or has had experiences like this, um, if you think that this resonated with you, that you could share it with them, I highly, highly recommend for you to do so and continue to help us build this community. Give this video a thumbs up if it resonated with you and I will see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.